Our Steve Karnacki is here to help us get ready for this March Madness. So we've got the brackets all ready to go. Who's in, who's out? Yeah, what a fun night last night was, finding out all of those teams, and now everybody trying to fill out their office bracket. We'll start on the men's side here. Here are the heavy hitters. These are the number one seeds in the tournament, and you can see the defending national champion here, the UConn Huskies. They won their conference, the Big East Tournament, over the weekend in convincing fashion. They are the top overall seed in this tournament. You see Houston, North Carolina, Purdue. They are the four number one seeds in a bracket that looks like this. Everyone in the country in their office, Office pool now is staring at this and saying, what do I do with this? Some fans here already have it filled out, but a couple things maybe to keep an eye on here that we can point out. Yeah, so we have the number one seeds that we show you. You know, one of the upsets, everybody's always asking, where are the upsets in this tournament? And we, one of the most common ones is the 12 seed beating the five seed. So the 12 seed matchups would be James Madison playing Wisconsin. It would be McNeese playing Gonzaga. This, you hear Gonzaga every year. This might be one of the uh, less kind of imposing teams they've brought to the tournament, so there could be an upset opportunity there. The <laughs> Grand Canyon against St. Mary's, and then you've got up here uh, uh, UAB against San Diego State. So those are, you know, the 12 spot generally produces at least one ups upset a year, and in fact, we can show you some stats here. As you fill it out in the history of the men's tournament, here's how the underdogs have done in the first round. And again, you see 35 percent wow. of the 12 seeds have won this thing. But Anna, here's one that might worry you a little bit. Oh. The number 10 seed beating the number seven seed happens 39 percent <laughs> of the time. You may know where I'm going with this, but I, I believe it's not going to happen on this side of the bracket. Well, I'm going to circle it. Over there. Because Anna is a proud graduate <laughs> of Washington State University, a seven seed, playing Drake. Are you scared of the upset? No, because we are fighters. Washington State hasn't been in the tournament in 16 years. It's been that long. We have that kind of a team this year that's going to take it all. It's going to take it all the way, baby. It's exciting. I think one of the best things about the tournament are stories like Washington State because it happens so infrequently, and it's a very big deal to them when it does. So we're going to be the Cinderella team. They're, yeah, this listen. They, if Washington State gets by look out in that second round <laughs> Iowa State but uh, that's what makes this tournament fun so good luck to the Cougars let's just take a look here at the women's bracket as well here are your top seeds South Carolina they replaced five starters from last year haven't lost a single wow. game this year a lot of attention to Iowa Caitlin Clark the explosive three-point specialist there she can hit it from anywhere they're a one seed first time in 32 years for that Texas is a one seed first time in 20 years how about USC wow. A one seed for the first time. Here's a name from the past. Cheryl Miller, 1986. That's the last time USC was the number one seed in this tournament. They get it in here. And what's really interesting is a lot of attention, as we say, to Iowa. But look at this region Iowa's in. They are the top seed. LSU, who they played in the national championship game, is up here. UCLA is up here. This is what you call a loaded region. So if Iowa makes it, they're going to have to achieve a lot. And I heard the women's championship game tickets are almost double right now the cost that the men's are because it is so popular. So I say, hey, go ladies. You got it. Girl power. Thank you so much. All Steve right. Kordaki.